Zero accounting software, reports, print, save as PDF, and organize. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage, scrolling in a bit, holding down control, scrolling up on the mouse wheel, currently at 175% zoom in, opening the demo company, but doing so by selecting the reset item resetting the demo and opening it at the same time we're then going to open up two tabs that we're going to be putting reports in after closing this icon here right click on the tab up top duplicate right click on the second tab duplicate again this is what we do every time so i'm doing it fairly quickly here we're going to go back to the middle tab accounting balance sheet open up the big balance sheet tab to the right Accounting drop down, income statement, open up the income statement or profit and loss. Back to the tab to the left, adjusting the balance sheet, custom date range, and let's bring it on up to 2022. And there we have it, update. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. In prior presentations, we've looked at what the balance sheet is. We've looked at tools for formatting the balance sheet, which also can be used formatting other reports. And we've looked at how we can start with a balance sheet and then adjust it to make other reports related to it. Comparative reports comparing different periods, having vertical and horizontal analysis type reports. Now we want to think about how we might be able to organize some of these reports when providing them either to a supervisor or a client if we are a bookkeeper. I'm primarily thinking as if we're a bookkeeper and we're trying to provide this data to a client. When we provide it to a client, we might do it like monthly, we might do it quarterly, we might do it yearly. Uh, we wanna be able to think about how we're gonna organize our data so that we can provide it to them in a nice organized fashion and, and group our reports up because oftentimes just the presentation is half of the battle, half of the job so that they're confident that we're doing our work. And then at the end of the year, when they really need us oftentimes for taxes and whatnot, we're gonna, they're, they're confident that we'll be here for them. So presentation is quite important. So how can we present these reports then to uh, a customer, to a client? Well, we could uh, print them and we, could, we can save them in this fashion. I can save as, I can export to Excel or Google Sheets. So I can save it as a PDF. I can print it from the PDF. So when you think about printing these reports, you can go to the PDF itself, create the PDF, open it up in a web format if we so choose, and then we can use this format to then print it. So that's how you generally would print if you want to send it to an actual printer. Once it's in the web or PDF format, of course, we can download it as well, saving it as a PDF, and then provide it to the client in that format. Uh, so then we can also export it to Excel, which is probably not what most people do, but it might be a good intermediary tool for us to then use Excel to put all the reports into one area. So we'll talk about how to do that. You might be able to do a similar thing with Google Sheets. Google Sheets possibly might be something that you could use just because you can link Google Sheets maybe more easily, but still you don't usually provide it in Google Sheets itself, although you might use Google Sheets to then print out or make a PDF with all the reports on one sheet. But we'll look at that format in Excel in a following presentation. So, and then of course, once we customize our reports, we might wanna save these custom reports as reports that we're gonna provide externally uh, to customers. So we'll talk about how to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recreate uh, some of these reports and then we'll, we'll save them. And then I'll save them as a PDF, which we can then give to clients in an email, or we can put them on a OneDrive or something like that so that they can access it that way. And, and then next time we'll, we'll compile it into one report that we can attach in Excel. 
So now oftentimes you might want to start off with a very simplified report. And this is often good for presentation purposes as well, something that's easy and then you expand on the data. So if I wanted to simplify this report, there's a couple ways we can do it. Let's just practice that with the edit tool over here. And one way I could do it is I could say, well, what if I just collapse? Like I could collapse this stuff right here and then I could collapse everything. And then, and so now I've just got my categories, right? So if I was to present this to somebody, I could update the data and say, let's not get into too much detail. Let's just break it out by account category as like a summary report. There's my current assets, fixed asset liabilities and equity. So that's one way you might try to format like a, like a summary balance sheet type of thing. Another way you might do it. And I just want to practice with the tools in here a little bit to do this is you might say, okay, I'm going to get rid of these groups all together and I'm just going to say I, I just want the accounts under assets liabilities and equity and remove the subcategories of like the cash and the current assets and the fixed assets so let's just test that out just for the fun of it I'm going to select this group I'm going to get rid of of the group so now I've just got the accounts up here I'm going to get rid of current assets I'm going to get rid of the fixed assets I'm going to get rid of the long-term assets I'm going to get rid of the current liabilities. And so now we've got, we've got long-term liabilities. Let's get rid of that. So now we've just got assets and all the accounts in there without all those subcategories, which makes the report a lot longer. So that's another way you might do like a, a simple, uh, simplified balance sheet. And so I'm going to say update the layout just to see how kind of you can use some of those tools. And so, so now we've just got assets, liabilities, and, and equity. So I'm going to call this like a summary balance sheet. So I'll put summary balance sheet up top. And we're going to say that looks good. And I'm just going to go the drop down. I'm going to say this is going to be decimals, uh, no decimals. So I'll save it like that. That looks good. And then I'm going to export it. A PDF of it and then I'm just gonna drag that PDF into my folder which is right here so I'm gonna say I'm just gonna put it in the zero folder and I should probably put it into another folder like I'm gonna right click and say these are these are the let's say I called it demo company report so I'll put it in the demo and I'll just drag it in there so I'm gonna pull that to this side so I can just drag and drop it and boom, so there it is. I can make that large like so, and I could double click on it and, and open it up. And so there it is. So that's that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close that up. I'm gonna rename it again. I'm gonna say this needs to be renamed to summary balance sheet. And if I spell it wrong, I apologize, but there we go. So there we have that. And then I might wanna save it as a custom report so I'm going to say, let's customize it. And I'm going to say, this is an external report. This is going to be some summary balance sheet. And you might want to like indicate whether it's going to be an internal report or an external report. And you might want to number them as well. So that if I do it next time, when I go into it again, I can go into them and just open them up at the end of each month and not have to reformat them. So I'll put a one next to it. I'll show you what I mean. We're then gonna save it if I go to the first tab and then accounting and reports. Now every month I can go into my custom reports and just open them up, change the date and hopefully print them out or save them as a PDF or whatever I want to do with them. Next, let's do another uh, balance sheet here. Let's, I'm gonna open up the balance sheet again to start from, from a fresh balance sheet. So I'll duplicate and let's open up another standard balance sheet, noting the balance sheet. We didn't overwrite the balance sheet or anything. It's still there. We just changed it. So now I'm gonna say, this is a custom date. Let's say it's at the end of 2022 and boom. I'll just recreate some of the ones we did before, uh, which is we did a, a, a horizontal analysis. So if you'll recall the horizontal analysis, I think we can do a comparison to a prior year, so I'll say year. Well, I think we did a prior month. Let's do a prior month. So there we have it. 
So now we got December, November. Now I'm gonna take the difference. I'm gonna add a difference column and a percent column. So we did this last time, so I'll do it fairly quickly. I'm just gonna edit it. I'm gonna add a column and I'm just gonna say boom percentage column. Click on that and actually wait a sec. That's not, the, I'm gonna trash that, trash that. I'm gonna say add a column. I want a formula column and it's gonna be, the formula is gonna be December minus November, boom. And then I'm gonna say, this is gonna be the column of the change, let's say. That looks good. And then I'm gonna add another one. And this is gonna be a formula column as well, which I'm gonna say is the change divided by the prior month, which is November. So cool. Okay, and it's gonna be a percent format. And this is gonna be the, I'll say, the percent change. So let's go ahead and update the layout. And so there we have it. It's thinking. So there we have it. Very nice. So I think I did that right, I hope. I'm gonna take off the decimals. I'm gonna go boom. Let's remove the decimals. And so there we have that. I think that looks that looks good. And so then I can save it as a custom report. Oh, I want to change the name. I'm going to say this is a, this is a, uh, let's just call it comparative balance sheet or horizontal analysis balance sheet. You might call it or something like that. Now I'm going to save it. I'm going to say custom. I'll call it number two or let's say comparative. So there we have that. And then I'll, I'll sit, save it as a PDF. We'll, you, we'll export it to Excel in a future presentation. Put that in my folder here. Pull that into my folder. So now we've got those two reports. I'm gonna rename this one. This is gonna be a, what do we say? Comparative balance sheet. And you might wanna number them in the folder as well, because that could give an indication to the recipient which ones you know you think they should open first second third and whatnot instead of it being in alphabetical order okay and so that of course will show up over here as well if i refresh the data we got two reports in our custom area let's do another one i'm going to right click and duplicate the tab again and do our vertical analysis so i'm going to hit the hit the drop down and go into the balance sheet and let's do a vertical analysis which we saw in a prior presentation making this custom i'll go 2022 december update that's our starting point i'll use my edit layout again i'm going to make another column this time i want a percentage column and clicking on the percent, we want a percent of as total assets. Yeah, assets. And that should be it, that's all we need. And then update, it's gonna think a bit. That's a lot of calculations right there. There's our vertical analysis. It's in a percentage format. Let's get rid of the decimals, drop down, decimals removed. And I'll call this a vertical analysis Ana now uh, analysis i don't know i don't know something like that okay so and then we can save that i can say custom i'm going to say number three vertical analysis they're going to make me do this i have to do it again something like that so I'll save that. I'm going to copy it this time. Save it. And boom. And now let's export it to a PDF. PDF. And I'll pull that into my folder here. And then I'm going to rename it. Rename. Boom. Now, now note, as we're doing this, I could keep on going, right? I, 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 I made a summary balance sheet. And then we could have, I didn't even do it like a standard balance sheet, but notice this stuff, like this 
you could replace the standard balance sheet with a vertical analysis because it has this balance sheet in it. And you could replace it with a comparative balance sheet because it has the analysis in it. It's just, it's just how much, but you also might want to break it out separately for the same reason we did the summary balance sheet, because if you have too much information on one uh, report, it becomes overwhelming to the reader sometimes. So if you're doing a presentation, I would actually make like a, a simplified balance sheet in some way, a summary balance sheet possibly in some way, and then maybe expand on it with a general balance sheet and then expand on it with, with comparative balance sheets so that anything I'm presenting to someone, if I have the control of presenting it to them, I don't have their eyes glaze over at the first report. If you're giving the reports to somebody else in like an email or a OneDrive, then the question is how many reports do you want? You wanna impress them to some degree, but you also don't wanna to go too over the board. Just notice I could, like we can also do comparative reports to the prior period. I could do comparative reports that also have a vertical analysis component to it on the same report. I can compare, I can compare instead of one month or two months, I can compare three months. I can compare four quarters versus two quarters this year to last year. So there's a whole lot of different comparative things uh, we can do. Whatever your structure is, once you figure it out, then you can kind of save them over here so that you can then just go into here at the end of each month and go, okay, number one, number two, number three, I'm gonna sort by title. And so it doesn't change it, sort by title. There it is. So one, two, three, and I can just open these up, change the date hopefully, and, and provide the reports. Now, once I have the reports over here in PDF format, then the question is, do I wanna attach these by email? Which means I need three attachments at this point. Or do I want to, to put them on a OneDrive or a cloud drive of some kind, which would be kind of nice, a little bit easier if your client is used to that. Or I could I can try to put them in a, another folder. I'll put them into uh, reports, I'll just call it. And then I'm gonna put these into the reports folder and you can zip the folder, allowing you to attach, if you're doing like a Z, an email or something, just one folder. So I'm gonna say they changed my, my look and feel of here, zip it there. So your zipped folder might not look exactly like this, but a zipped type folder, then you can attach that. And that's another way that you can do it. Or we could try to get all these reports on one, uh, on one PDF, which we'll do next time with the help and use of exporting to Excel and then using a, a PDF printer to print them all out on one report. So we'll, we'll try that out next time. Also just note that this is, we're just talking about balance sheet reports here too. So next section, we'll go into the income statement reports where you have the, another, the same kind of range of being able to, to do comparative reports and whatnot as well. Those are the two main reports and variations of them. You have like an infinite number of variations that you could do. And then of course you have all the other reports that, that are giving more detail about some line items of the balance sheet and the income statement. We'll dive into those in future sections or, or uh, future sections or courses or presentations.